everyone. I hope everyone had a wonderful week and I hope everyone is ready for our study today in Isaiah. We're going to be focusing on Isaiah 1 verses 5 through 9 and it's about soundness of the head. All right, so grab your Bibles, grab your journals, and get ready and we'll have some time with God. Now I'm going to start by reading in Isaiah. And Isaiah is in the Old Testament, in case you didn't know, because not everybody knows everything that everybody else knows, so I like to give these little tidbits of information. And Isaiah is one of the prophets. And we're going to be starting in verse 9, and I'll read through verse 9. <laughs> Crazy, aren't I? Verse 5, and I'm going to read through 9. <clears throat> Excuse me. Are you ready? Hopefully. All right. It says, why should ye... Yeah, sorry. Stumbled again. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. I should read that again, I'm sorry. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have been, they have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land. Strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolate, as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in the vineyard, as a lodge in the garden of cucumbers as a besieged city. Verse 9, the last one. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. When I read that, there was so much. My mind was racing in a lot of different directions. And I thought, oh, there's a lot in this that I want to think about and study and ponder on. So the first part, so I wrote down all the verses like I normally do. Then I looked up all the words and found definitions and found references for a lot of the words in here. And then I made some bullet point notes on this side of the page. Oh, it popped out, so I'll just lift it up. And what I did was I made bullet points of things that I thought I want to think about and I want to ponder about. And the first one is, this passage, the head of the people is sick, sin sick. And I thought, well, it could be the head of the country, like they're talking about here. It could be a head of a company, could be a head of a church, it could be a head of the family, or it could be our head. Is the leader of whatever sin sick? And then I thought, well, if I have sin in my life, I'm sin sick, and I need to do something about it. So that's when I thought, okay, I need to think on this and ponder about this a little bit more. And then I said, and I wrote down next, and their hearts are faint. The people's hearts are faint when the head isn't right. It's ill because it's sin sick. 
And like I said, we can think of it as the leader of our country on down to ourselves. If we're sin sick, we're being faint. Our faith won't be what it needs to be. Our trust won't be what it needs to be. Our prayer life won't be what it needs to be. And our study life won't be what it needs to be. So we need to think on this. We need to think, are we sin sick? Is the leader that of whatever is distressing us sin sick? And think on this. And it always should start with us. The next thing is, I read in the verses, there is no soundness to follow. If there's sin, there is no soundness. The soundness goes away because we're separated from God, from our sin, by our sin. The people are wounded, bruised, and have infected sores, and there is no healing. If we think about a nation, this nation is wounded because they didn't follow God. They're bruised and have infected sores that will not heal. And that's what happens a lot of times in a lot of different areas, like I said. And it can be any area, even our own life. So if we as individuals are sin sick, then the, excuse me, those around us are infected as well because sin spreads out. If we have sin in our life, we're not behaving the way we're supposed to be behaving and we're not do and we're not doing or behaving the way we're supposed to. We're behaving in a manner of not being close to God because we aren't because we have the sin. And it affects outward. It could be us, and it could be the company, it could be a church, it could be the any country, it could be the whole world. And we need to think how each of those areas affect us and the ones we love. And it says strangers are taking over their country and devouring it overthrowing it and making it desolate. Are we allowing things into our lives? Strangers that we watch on TV, movies, even the commercials. If we allow things to come into us, like into a country or a company, or any place where we're allowing something to come in that's going to damage us and not make us function the way we should, we need to get that out. The strangers don't care about God, and that's sad, especially if we're allowing it in our lives. If we're allowing strangers to influence our lives, in a way that leads us away from God, that's why we're having such problems. Strangers don't know God, but God knows them. God knows each one of us. He knows us so much. Like when we did the study in Zacchaeus, and we mentioned the fact that Jesus went to where Zacchaeus was. He knew where Zacchaeus was. Zacchaeus sought him out because he was curious, but Jesus knew because he's God. And he knew Zacchaeus so much that when he walked up to him, he called him by name because he knows all of our names. He knows all about us. He knows us so much that in Matthew 10:30, which I'll turn to that now, 
and it's in red. And that means Jesus is saying these words to us. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. He knows us that much, that he knows how many hairs we have on our head. He knows our names. He knows our thoughts. And he knows us like this because he loves us. And he wants to have a good relationship with us. Are our thoughts sound? Are the leaders we are following sound in mind? The kind of sound of mind that they've got their mind set on God. We need you, Lord, to turn the heads of our leaders, even if it's just us, turn our heads, please, Lord. That needs to be our daily thoughts, our daily prayers. Everyone that we come in contact, we either influence or are being influenced by. So what we let into our lives affects us. So we need to remember that. We need to say, okay, put up my gates. That's not the right person to follow. Or I don't want to listen to that. And put those gates up and say, excuse me, but I've got to go. Pardon me. Or you know, whatever, and just politely go on someplace else. Because you do not want to let evil into your thoughts. And then it says, it is only because of God these people in this passage weren't totally wiped out. Because of their sins. It was their own sins that caused this. So that's why God is telling us, read his word, learn from it. These people had a lot of problems in their life because they let that sin in. They let leaders above them who don't love God lead them. And that was a big no-no because they're not interested in their spiritual well-being. They're not interested in anything except for themselves most of the time. Are our thoughts sound? Are our time that we have spent wisely in a way that would be pleasing unto God? Are we listening with, for that still small voice to speak to us? likes to speak to us and talk to us. And the last thing I thought, let's think about, are we praying? Are we doing our proper prayers? When we come in contact with something that's not right, are we asking for forgiveness and asking, help me Lord, to not be exposed to that kind of stuff anymore. Help me Lord, when I am to walk away, to stand strong, to say, I'm sorry, I don't believe this way, or I don't like that kind of stuff. I'm just going to step away. Show his light. Show people that you don't like that kind of thing. And if you're a good influence on them because you show his light on a daily basis, then they'll think, huh, he or she is a nice person. They're always kind. They don't want to listen to it. Maybe it's something we shouldn't be listening to, too. And be that kind of influence. So, focus on making sure our minds are sound. The ones we are following are sound. And they're following God. We're following God. And we're praying and asking God to help us to be sound in mind for Him. Well, that's what I had this week, and I sure hope you enjoyed it, and you uh, do your journal pages and study up on it as well. 
Well, thank you so much for joining in. Thank you. Bye-bye.